you could use like uh, just subs. Like, uh, let's say I over. Oh, that's nope. This is in the wrong place to have a list comprehension. Oh my. Okay. <laughs> So I mean, you could you could try doing this, and you could try using evalf, but this is all written in Python using arbitrary precision, so it can be kind of slow. So a much better way is to use this this function called lambdaFy, and what this does, uh, you do lambdaFy x expression, and if you do numpy, what this does is it returns a function that you can evaluate at a NumPy array. So let's say A equals and I hope my NumPy is and so what LambdaFy does is it takes this expression and it basically ships it out into, it replaces sign with NumPy sign, it replaces exp with NumPy's exp, so that it, you can just, so a nice, a nice thing to use with SymPy sometimes is to use the symbolics to build up some expression and then use LambdaFy to ship that off to doing numerics. Okay, are you, are you up with through this? I'm happy to stand up and talk about it. Is it, is it in 7.2? Your module? I think it is. it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, so here's the guy who wrote the stats module. So I was literally just in the other room <laughs> and just got grabbed. So what was the question? He wants to know, he just wants to learn about how to do some statistics. Just give it a short intro about how to do statistics. Okay. Um, is this? Yeah, yeah, just talking to the mic. Okay. Um, so the basic abstraction that SymPy uses to talk about statistics. Actually, I say SymPy doesn't do statistics. Statistics is taking data and making insight off of that. SymPy does probability. So we can build probabilistic models. I was talking about no more random variables, but you can't like, give me a bunch of data and you know, find the mean of that data. You should use something else to find means and standard deviations of data. Uh, if you want to think about physical systems that have uncertainties in them, then SymPy is a fun way to go. Um, so the abstraction we use is a random variable abstraction. Um, so we could say x is a normal random variable, um, uh, you know, with mean zero and standard variance one. Uh, and then we can, you know, ask for the probability that x is greater than five. Does that can work out. How do yeah, I, uh, for some reason, the math doesn't work in Chrome, so I need to uh, I need to use Safari. That doesn't look like Safari. I can also just print out expressions with strings. Oh, but you didn't save the notebook. So we're really attempting the, the demo gods here, right? <laughs> not only is this totally on, not only is you know the demo not done, but the presenter. Is <laughs> <done>. <laughs> okay. Um, that's not very pretty. I wonder if Simplify can do better than that. Um, yeah, you can cancel some supplies. So. Yeah. Okay. So, um, what SymPy stats? I'll actually also say last year I presented SymPy stats. So there's a video online if you're interested. Um, but what actually happens, which I which I enjoy. Um, uh, oh wait, that's the wrong. Yeah, let's just get rid of simplify. So how this works under the hood 
is that SymPy stats takes your, your random expressions and turns them into SymPy integrals. And then it asks the SymPy integration system to do that for you. Um, so this is a very simple example. You can, you can do interesting things. Or let's do dice. Here's a six-sided die. Here's another six-sided die. Uh, let's say z is x plus y. It's probably that z is greater than nine. Um, it's probably that z is greater than nine given that x is less than three. Um, so you can do conditional probabilities also. Well, they should work. There we go. Um, so there's a lot of fun little queries. You can ask for probabilities. You ask for densities. You can ask for, you know, what's the variance of z? Um, and again, all this does is that it sets up these big sort of SymPy expressions, either integrals or summations, and it tries to solve them analytically. Um, so if you read like a Stats 101 book, there's all these, you know, if I have this this random variable and I transform it with some function, I then need to take the distribution and transform it with the inverse and a derivative. It's a really sort of hairy problem. If you've ever done stats 101, there's a lot of really annoying algebra you do at the beginning, and you forget all about that later on. Uh, SymPy is really good at annoying algebra, it turns out. Uh, so we can do a lot of those things for you. Uh, did the questioner have a particular request or? No, I'm just kind of curious like, what it does and how you do stuff. Yeah, so under the hood, SymPy just, I've taught SymPy the Stats 101 book. Uh, and it just, I just then depend on all of the other parts of SymPy to perform those operations. Um, but again, this isn't statistics. If you have a bunch of data, this isn't going to help you. Uh, but if you want to think about uncertainty quantification, uncertainty propagation, it's a little more interesting. Yeah. Um, and then also for more complex problems, uh, obviously the integrals that we create, you can't really solve often. For complex problems, the integrals tend to be very, very hairy. Uh, but then, just like Aaron showed, you could then switch off to some numeric system. And SymPy has some nice hooks to you know, build the problem symbolically and then send that problem to some other more sophisticated, more mature numeric solver. Um, so there's sort of that nice balance. You can think at a very high level, then you can do your computation later. Uh, think, then compute. Okay. Is that good? Can you give us a can you give us a sense about you know how fast SymPy does that is and like the, the number of distributions you're offering and things like this? Um, Yes, yeah, so the sort of the, the cardinality of distributions roughly matches the SciPy stats thing. Not, I mean, I think it's a little bit less. In the in the Git version, it's much higher. Yeah. There's a developer who just like. He just like went into Wikipedia and <laughs> implemented every distribution that was on Wikipedia. And stats. Yeah. Um, I wonder how. Um, yeah. I mean, he's. This is actually not nearly as nice as it is in the future, but he essentially just wrote down all of the math that you would like to have on distributions. So in terms of just the cardinality of numbers of distributions, it's quite high. Uh, in terms of you know, the complexity of problems that it can solve, uh, uncertainty problems become very difficult to solve analytically very quickly, uh, which becomes challenging. Um, yeah, does that answer your question? But if there is an analytic solution, there's a, a decent chance to find it because it is pretty powerful and very powerful. Yeah, for the, I, I was very surprised at the extent to which SymPy could go. Uh, I was expecting that to switch to numerics almost immediately. And for fairly complex problems, that's not the case. Usually, if you can solve it by hand, SymPy can also solve it by hand. Other questions? You guys having a fun time so far? Are these guys boring you too much? Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a. I mean, so it's also been like years since I've worked on this, but or a year. Uh, I think there's a continuous. Our random variable. Uh, how does that work? You give it a symbol and a density, which is a SymPy expression, and then some set over which that distribution exists. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm yeah. -hmm. Um, so we had x was a normal. Oh yes, sure. Um, 
conditional distributions. Can we make conditional distributions? Um, so if x is a normal 0, 1, and we'll have, you know, z is given x, x is, we learned that x is greater than 5. X is greater than zero. What's the density of Z? Nope. Lowercase. Lowercase? Someone's apparently in the API already. This is amazing. Yeah, look at that. Um, <laughs> um, so that's a function. We want that evaluated at some X. Um, but that's not enough. See. This has also changed a bit since the last. So uh, hypothetically, if I do minus three, that should give me a zero, and that's uh, not at all going to happen. Oh, minus three there. Nope, fail. Demogods don't like me. Uh, in the newer version, this works better. Uh, but the syntax is given. And so what this does is it makes a, internally, um, random variables are described by some sort of senpai symbol, some sort of thing, some token to work on, and a distribution that's some senpai function over some senpai set. So senpai handles sets pretty well, it handles functions pretty well. And so you have, you know, if I were to consider, um, you know, x and y are both random variables, where I x plus y, that's just, okay, that's valid over the whole R2, and the distribution is just this, you know, Gaussian over that. Um, and if you say, well, x plus y is greater than five, then it, you know, cuts that set a bit, you have know, this new distribution. Uh, and then we ask a question like, well, then what's the, what's the probability that x is 3? Then it, it finds some set in there and does the right integral. Um, so there's this nice geometric understanding of how probability works under the hood, um, which allows you to ask questions as long as your questions can be posed as SymPy objects. So if SymPy can describe the set you want to talk about, it's fine. If SymPy can describe the, the distribution you want to talk about, it's fine. And if SymPy can produce can take your query and form new SymPy things with it. You make integrals, it can make sums. Uh, so SymPy stats was a, a strong exercise in doing no work on my own. It's just depending on these other more mature things. Uh, yeah, I apologize, that didn't work. I, I believe what I just said works in the new version. And you can do more complex things. Um, there's a blog post if you search for SymPy and the Kalman filter. Uh, you'll get a nice little demonstration of uh, updating a prior distribution with new noisy measurements, and that'll be all conditional. Yeah? Uh, what about uh, multi dimensional? Yeah, so um, again, there's this nice geometric thing, and that geometric thing can be multi dimensional. If you've got a thousand dimensions, that's probably not going to work out so well, uh, but I can handle you know, many univariate distributions. Um, and again, as I said, you can, you can make those joint by adding conditions. Um, uh, the Kalman filter example on, online, search for that, uh, is a nice example of joint probability distributions. Um, there was some thought at one point of doing multivariate normal distributions. Uh, and there's some branch that was never really developed that has that. But, okay. Should I give control back to you guys? Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you. If you other questions, I'm around. Thank you, Matthew. We owe you a beer. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you want to show the web, the blog? His blog? Oh. Okay. Hmm? oh. Uh, are there any other things that people want to, or questions or? Um, this book, right? Uh, no, no, that's, that's, that's on code generation. Okay. Okay, yeah, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. doesn't matter. So I like the common filter. There's a few common filter blogs. Okay. I mean, do you mean, what do you mean? Just like taking. Oh, so there is a, there is a differential geometry module um, that has, I think it's. Oh. So, so the question is, uh, if SymPy can handle functions of more variables and doing calculus, like differentiating them, integrating them, yeah, that, that should work. 
So we create a function and then I create some. So Aaron doesn't like me that I use this var, <laughs> so I should be using symbols. Uh, X. X is already defined. Y, Z, right? Yeah, but they're already defined. Yeah. Okay, well, let's just make sure. Um, and then, so we create a function of three variables. Um, oh, but I guess you probably meant like, um, so I guess if, so So first of all, you can do like a symbolic function of a couple of variables, but probably what you meant is like if I create some expression, let's say, like this is already a function of three variables, right? Or Oh, so okay, so so the gradient, so you can do, you can differentiate with respect to x. So gradient has three components, right? So then I differentiate with respect to y. So actually, one of the Google Summer Code projects that we mentioned at the beginning is writing a vector calculus module, which will um, hopefully have, provide a much nicer formalism for doing things like gradients and um, computing things with vectors. So for now, I mean, the uh, SymPy can do all the derivatives that you need to do, um, but uh, the actual formalism of having vectors and stuff will be much improved. So how to do is like finding the uh, for, uh, for now, I think so, yeah. I mean, there might be a, there Matrix might be a, Jacobian. hmm? Matrix have a Jacobian yeah, there's a Jacobian method of matrix. So, I mean, you can, you can create a matrix. I don't remember how it works. Takes exactly two arguments. Okay. So when you don't know how to use something, it's great to use a question mark like we do now. And it gives you many times in SimPy gives you examples of usage, so you can just copy and paste it literally. I don't think you have to erase it, you can just execute it. No, because, okay. oh, no, in, in this one I can, actually. Okay. So here, um, x, y. So I'm taking the Jacobian of this with respect to that. Oh, I see, y has to be a matrix. So, yeah, you can do Jacobian. Jeez. Um. Well, I, w I mean, ser yeah, we we did. S are you trying to do what kind of like a multivariate series? I mean, I think you usually expand it one with respect to one variable at a time, right? Oh, this is something that uh, also Matthew is working on, these matrix expressions, doing derivatives of matrices. I don't think he's talking about that, but uh, I don't understand your application. Yeah, I, I oh. So the question was whether SymPy can do derivatives of, six, of uh, with respect to matrices? So, so the question is about tensors? <laughs> I think the things that you want to do will all be implemented in this Google Summer of Code project, actually. I, it sounds like you're just, you're just trying to do like a basic third semester calculus kind of multivariate calculus um, stuff, like doing, doing gradients and, and uh, multiple integrals and stuff like that. Another uh, example of that is uh, uh, the Hessian. The Hessian? So the question is how to calculate the Hessian? Do you understand the question? Yeah. Do you understand the question? I didn't quite get what the. He's explaining. Oh. Uh huh. 
Yeah. Maybe there's some series expansion. Can we compose the idea of series expansion? Well, I mean, you can you can do if you, you have a question. Uh, he wants to know if, if you can compose exp uh, series expansions in matrices. Multivariate Taylor expansion. Right. Um, I don't actually remember the math of that well enough to answer, actually. I think. So the, the way the, the series expansion works, maybe, I, maybe they will answer part of your question. The way it works in SymPy is, for example, if I'm expanding this cosine of x times y, um, it just treats this cosine as a function of, of something, expands it, and... Sub, and um, so in this case, okay. So in this case, in terms of x, so the the way it works, it it expands the cosine as a series, and then it, you know, recursively, you know, ex expands it out. So it starts by expanding the inner function, which is x times y. So the expansion is simple; it's just x times y, and then it starts, and then it puts this expansion into cosine, the series for cosine, and then term by term, you know, gets gets all the terms. So. And I don't know if the multivariate Taylor series. So, so I guess your question is whether this works for any f function of multiple variables or. So if I expand this in, in re, with respect to um, to x, let's see. Oh, but he wants to expand them both at the same time. So oh, I think I think our order term doesn't support multivariate uh, orders. Oh, oh, I see. So you want to expand this, and you want to also expand y. I mean, you, oh. can, you can do. You can just do this. Ha! Huh, you cannot. Oh, but uh, remove the. But the only thing is, you can't. You're not going to be able to use the uh, order term. Oh, I see. And now the question is that the order term should have all the, the, the orders of x and y, right? Right. I mean, I think, I think you could manually. <laughs> <laughs> I think it supports it. It just doesn't do it yet. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, A lot of this will be here all week. Yes, I'll be here all week. Um, do, do you have a question? Yeah, just um, <clears throat> so like, just take a, a simple example. You know, say you have like uh, ax plus b equals y. How do you move the terms around between the three different sides of the sign? Okay, well, be the question. He, he wants to know if you have some expression, um, just some simple expression, like say uh, x plus one equals uh, y plus three. He wants to know how do you move things across the equal sign. Um, and the answer is that usually, usually you don't really work with e these equal objects because um, I don't know if you, you noticed when Andre, if, if you want to solve like x plus 1 equals to 4, you can do like this. But also, SymPy just automatically assumes that things equal to 0. So it's usually easiest to just work with expressions instead of equalities. And so, like, if you wanted to solve this, you would just do x plus 1 minus 4, you know, basically subtract it from both sides of the equation, and you get the same thing. So uh, with, these equal, with these EQ objects, it's actually kind of, uh, kind of messy. Like, you, you can do EQ, LH. You have to basically do this. if you want to subtract one to the other side. Yes? Mm -hmm. You just type the, just type the, oh, okay, so he wants to know, how do you define symbols with Greek letters that, that print nicely? And the answer is you just define, SymPy is smart enough that if you type, if you make a symbol called beta, it'll print it as beta. And the, uh, you know, same thing. And uh, if you want to use lambda, 
Like you can't do this because lambda is a reserved keyword. So we've made it so you can just say lambda with, without the B. And even if you type it without the B, it'll still pretty print like lambda. And if you want to do an uppercase letter, you use the capital version. Uh, just start it with a capital letter. Huh? Oh, there's just a dictionary of, of Greek letters to, um, to corresponding Unicode characters. The, pr the printing system is actually pretty elaborate in SymPy, and it's actually extensible. So if you want to modify the printers or even write your own printer, it's actually fairly straightforward. Or if you want to write, make your own SymPy object and define how that object prints itself in LaTeX, you can do that. Oh, yeah, there's a question here. So, um, when you were doing things like collect and take apart the partial functions and polynomials, I presume things like the denominator are irreducible and. Yeah, uh huh. Is there any support for irreducible polynomials in other fields? Oh, there. Repeat the question. He wants to know if there are support for irreducible polynomials over other, other fields than just the rationals. And the answer is yes. So, like, for example, this polynomial is irreducible, but you can do, I hope I remember, if you want to extend it with i. So this capital I is the square root of negative 1. Um, so you can add this extension parameter here, um, and that will include that. And I think you can also even just do true, and it will automatically. Uh, maybe not. I don't remember. I think there's some way to make it automatically work, figure out what, what it needs. And actually, one of our Google Summer Code projects is improving <coughs> these factorizations over uh, algebraic number domains. Okay. Well, if there aren't any other questions, I think we're out of time. Then let's give them a hand. And thank you.